PlayStation 2's emotion engine and scale of its technology pushed the storytelling capabilities of video games like no generation had before it. However, with the PlayStation 3, there was to be no limit to what could be accomplished in a cinematic and artistic sense. One of the PS3's earliest titles was a game that tested just how far that technology had come and was a true showstopper for your new console. Heavenly Sword began development in 2002 and was Ninja Theory's first PlayStation video game, a small studio from Cambridge that was about to make its mark in the industry. From the beginning, Ninja Theory wanted a fantasy action game with a striking female lead. Her design evolved a lot from her original build, but she kept the bold reds, however, instead swapping out the costume for long, wavy hair. Heavenly Sword released for the PlayStation 3 on the 14th of September 2007 and was published by Sony Computer Entertainment, who saw how important the game could be for the PlayStation 3's launch portfolio. Heavenly Sword saw major inspiration from the action games of the PlayStation 2, having Devil May Cry's fluid sword-based combat and God of War's linear yet massive vistas and set pieces, whilst also getting a lot of traits from popular East Asian martial arts movies. Heavenly Sword starred Nariko, a bold protagonist stood out by her mane of long, beautiful red hair. Her striking design holds well against the huge sword that she carries around with her, the Heavenly Sword. This is a single-player linear action game that sees Nariko, played by Anna Torv, claim the powerful Heavenly Sword and use it to save her land from the wretched King Bohan and his army, who threaten to destroy Nariko's clan. The game is set across six chapters and can be completable within a single sitting, lasting only a few hours in length. Long ago, there was a war between the people of the land and an evil, power-hungry demonic chief called the Raven Lord. The people of the land were given help when a bright warrior descended from the heavens and defeated the Raven Lord, freeing the lands. However, the warrior disappeared, leaving just his magical sword behind. The legends surrounding the sword became the centre of new wars, as it corrupted those who lusted for its power. Luckily, a new tribe rose and took the sword, keeping it out of the clutches of those who would use its power for no good. A prophecy was made that the sword's original owner would be reborn and unite the world's now scattered tribes and bring forth a new age of peace. However, when the time came, it would be Nariko that was born, not the legendary warrior, but a woman, and this was seen as a mockery by her tribe. With Nariko's mother dying of childbirth, the tribe leader and her father, Master Shen, also doubted the true nature of his very own daughter. Nariko's only friend is Kai, a wild young girl who is the last member of a different tribe that saw their fate at the hands of the dreaded King Bohan. Played by Andy Serkis, King Bohan is a tyrannical ruler that is planning to vanquish all the scattered tribes under his heel so that he can usher in the age of his new empire. All that stands in his way is Shen and Nariko's tribe. As his armies and generals get closer, this is Nariko's time to claim her destiny. Now, like more contemporary action games, you use square and triangle to attack with many combos being available when you mix the two attack buttons in rhythm. Some of these combos can break an opponent's block and will become useful against most enemies. Triangle also acts as a counter when pressed as your opponent is about to hit you. See, Nariko blocks automatically when you're not attacking, which is useful in pressing the focus on the offensive. Circle allows you to use a super style attack, which is a powerful screen clearing move. The super style's encounters will shift the camera to showcase the elegant animations more clearly and really creates this cinematic style. The right stick is used to dodge roll around the fixed camera environments, much like Santa Monica's God of War. X is used to interact with the environment, climbing ladders or grabbing objects and even dead enemies to which you can throw. Some thrown objects can also be guided, with the PlayStation 3 controller's new 6-axis motion features. Nariko uses two different weapons in the game, besides the standard sword that you're stuck with until you get the Heavenly Sword. 
The title weapon has three stances that you can swiftly switch between and does perfectly well in keeping the combat fresh and different. Speed is the default stance and has you executing fast combos with the sword split into two halves, which has a good balance between damage and agility. Range stance is activated when holding down L1, this has you using chains to launch your blades further distances and has unique counters at the expense of weak damage. Power stance is activated when holding down R1 and sees Nariko wield the full sword as one huge blade. This definitely has the strongest attacks and combos at the expense of taking longer to import. Utilising all three is important and feels very smooth in execution. Not having a wheel or menu to change your stance is a relief in these aggressive high speed battles. Not taking damage whilst engaging combat builds a combo meter which awards you glyphs, and these unlock you new combos and bonus material. The only other weapon Nariko wields is a fantasy cannon launcher, which opens up some epic sequences of you obliterating massive amounts of enemies and giant catapult launchers. This too uses the 6 axis features, allowing you to control the direction of the cannon. There is a handheld version and some fixed position sequences to break up the heavy combat sequences. Alongside Nariko there is Kai, who you also take control of at certain points through the game, with one chapter even being entirely dedicated to her. Kai's portions are either fixed sniping sections, using her crossbow and the same 6 axis manoeuvring of the arrows to defeat your targets, or they are third person action sequences, but while Kai has no melee combat, you have the ability to vault over waist high cover or scramble over enemies with her cat like agility to get away from them. Make enough distance and then you can unleash your crossbow to take them out. It's a great change of pace playing as both characters as they do feel like two entirely different experiences, one more aggressive and the other more defensive. Nariko and Kai's infiltration of King Bohan's palace makes for some beautiful set pieces and picturesque landscapes. The detail in every sequence is award winning, especially Nariko's wavy red mane that is always moving and looks very natural especially for the time that this game released. Kai has very nimble and feline movements, complemented by her petite design and ear-like headwear. These designs are just excellent. The soundtrack was composed by Nitin Sawney, who has done a great job marrying the big orchestral waves with the more intimate Indian and Middle Eastern instruments to create these grand pieces of music that really accentuate how unique Heavenly Sword's world is. But arguably, Heavenly Sword's best feature is the facial animations. These have been constructed so well with some modern video games still not able to reach the motion capture and face shading qualities of this game, and with the excellent voice cast it makes these performances all the more believable and just wonderfully entertaining. Come on, Roach, you blundering oaf! Your daddy doesn't like you very much, does he? You must talk about daddy like that! Stop playing with her and kill the wretched girl! But she's hurting me! She's hurting my head! Nothing compared to what I'll do to you! Oh, you poor little thing! <laughs> Look! <laughs> Now King Bohan isn't without his high ranking warriors, who act as the game's boss battles. The first we take down is Whiptail, a serpentine woman who is the personal mistress of King Bohan. She traps Nariko and tells her the truth about how her father Shen wanted to kill Nariko shortly after her birth. Nariko having just rescued Shen tells him to leave without her, and the battle against Whiptail begins. Using your ranged stance to hold back her waves of water, Whiptail is an early challenge who ends up being impaled with the Heavenly Sword. King Bohan turns up and finishes off Whiptail due to her failure. He then takes Nariko captive and it's here where we take full control of Kai as we set out to rescue Nariko. This section where we are looking for the Heavenly Sword in Bohan's armory actually had a pretty cool God of War easter egg which I hadn't noticed before, with Kratos' Blades of Chaos and armor plate held next to the Heavenly Sword, likely because of the game's influence on this game. But as Kai acquires the sword, Bohan's next general takes chase. Flying Fox is the most menacing of Bohan's warriors, with him being the one that murdered Kai's mother when she was only young. 
Before Nariko can rescue Kai, she is first pitted against the next boss, Roach, King Bohan's large, muscular and deformed son, who he detests. Having him spin into the metal structures around the arena is the best way to take Roach down. Knowing how forced he is to obey his father, Nariko leaves from finishing him off. Nariko and Kai flee, but Flying Fox catches up to Kai and tries to hang her. But Nariko intervenes, and this is our next boss. Fox is a fairly easy win when you deflect most of his attacks. As they duel, Kai shoots Fox with the crossbow, with the arrow landing right between his eyes. King Bohan rallies his armies to launch the final battle against Nariko and her clan. This next battle is just pure epic and a grand finale to the game. You battle hundreds of enemies all on screen at once, which just looks incredible, especially for the PlayStation 3. But as the Heavenly Sword starts to kill Nariko, she makes a pact with the sword that she will use the full extent of its power and it will not become a forgotten dusty relic. The sword then grants Nariko godly powers and it's here where you get to wreak complete havoc on the battlefield, and it is glorious. Meanwhile, King Bohan, who now needs some extravagant power of his own, calls upon his true master, the Raven Lord, who was beside him this whole time. Merging with the Raven Lord, we have our final battle. Raven Lord Bohan is fought in three stages and can be a pretty tough battle. You will need to utilise all of the parries that you can and the biggest combos in Nariko's arsenal. As Bohan is defeated, the Raven Lord leaves his body and pecks his eyes out before flying away into the horizon. Nariko goes to strike Bohan down, but Roach intervenes just in time, begging Nariko to let him take his father home. As Bohan called Roach his son for the first time, Nariko, knowing that she has now won, shows them mercy and lets them leave. But it's not all a victory for Nariko, as she has to use the last of her godly power to save Kai from death. Nariko declares that the sword could not have been from heaven, and that she has served the purpose of the prophecy by bringing forth a new age of peace. Nariko gives the sword to Kai, telling her to hide it away for all eternity before passing away. Nariko is given a ritualistic funeral that sees her body placed on a boat filled with blossoms and cast out to sea. And that brings us to the end of Heavenly Sword. Upon completion of the game, you unlock a new difficulty called Hell Mode, and you'll have a bunch of special features to view from all of the glyphs that you've achieved through the chapters. There's the animated series, which is a set of beautifully animated short films that act as a prologue to the game and were produced by Chase Animation Studios. Only the first two episodes are included, but the following three can be found online. The art gallery has over a hundred stunning concept art images to view, getting to see what many of the game's environments looked like in the early phases, and even some early designs of the characters. Lastly, the making of Heavenly Sword is a behind-the-scenes documentary split into five episodes that detail the production of the game from the music to the sound effects and even the motion capture. A really good watch after having experienced the game. Heavenly Sword is a magnificent cinematic action game that was pushing the technology of the time and really opening the door on what could be accomplished with the video game medium. While there were still some limitations made evident by some screen tearing or frame rate drops, you can still appreciate all of what it accomplished just by its high quality and passion that shines through every set piece. Heavenly Sword saw mostly positive reviews, with praise being awarded to the combat system and graphical qualities. With the short length, fixed shooting sections and heavily precise quick time events being the main complaints that critics had with the game. Heavenly Sword was reported to have sold close to 1.5 million copies, but unfortunately it still wasn't enough to break even with the budget of the game. Despite this, Heavenly Sword still won three awards at the 11th Annual Interactive Achievement Awards. They were for Outstanding Character Performance, Outstanding Art Direction and Outstanding Original Music Composition. Heavenly Sword is still a fairly forgotten Sony IP, with it being a really underrated gem from the PlayStation 3. But the legacy of Heavenly Sword doesn't end there. 
After the release of the game, Nariko became quite a female icon for some time, being ranked in many favourite video game protagonist lists, including Complex Magazine's list of the greatest video game heroines of all time in 2013. The director of Heavenly Sword did hint back in 2008 that a trilogy was in the works and at the time of the game's release, a sequel was already in the early writing phase, with you taking full control of Kai in the sequel. For unknown reasons, however, Ninja Theory closed down the plans for a sequel shortly after and would move on to their next project, which was made with Bandai Namco and not Sony. Sony still owns the rights to the Heavenly Sword IP, so if we were to ever get a sequel or follow-up, it'll be when they feel the time is right. But Sony didn't fully abandon Heavenly Sword. In 2012, Nariko reappeared as a playable character on the roster of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, which was a surprising yet awesome addition for her to have been seen as a pivotal part of PlayStation's history alongside more popular characters like Kratos and Nathan Drake. Interestingly, she was voiced by Jennifer Hale in this game instead of her original voice actor, Anna Tov. Sony then went on to release a film adaptation of Heavenly Sword in 2014. The CG movie was produced by Blockade Entertainment and did see Anna Tov reprise her role as Nariko. However, the rest of the cast was replaced with Alfred Molina of Dr. Octopus fame taking over Andy Serkis as King Bohan. The film retells the events of the game, but only loosely, changing quite a lot of details such as introducing a brother of Nariko's called Loki, which I felt was a little unnecessary. It's also astonishing how the animation and production quality had taken a big step backwards from the video game itself, which predates this by several years. Since then, anything from the Heavenly Sword IP has been quiet. Thankfully, we still have the awesome PlayStation 3 experience, and Nariko's deserve recognition in the PlayStation platform fighter. Have you played Heavenly Sword, or maybe you now want to give it a go? Let me know in the comments below what you think of this game. Join us next time when we'll be staying around the PlayStation 3 as we take on Ninja Theory's next adventure in a post-apocalyptic future.